they're trying to do. I tell you guys right now, man, Justin Fields, when he's outside the pocket, his accuracy is uncanny. The way he throws the ball when he's on the move to his left or his right is unbelievable. And, and yesterday when he held the ball a little bit on that one boot, which you like to see him do, if he takes off there, he's got about 15 yards. So when he starts to learn to do, like when to, when to take yards, when to throw the ball, uh, he's going to be dangerous on those boot plays, which really, like Alice can tell you, as a backside DN, slows you down. And then guess what? That running back sliding out the back door, man, because now you mm-hmm. got to play both things because your coaches tell you uh, you're basically wrong whatever decision you make. And you don't know <laughs> what to do. So you got two things in your head. And now, now the backside DN is frozen. And guess what? David Montgomery's coming downhill. And good luck with the arm tackle on David Montgomery. So, J-Mac, like you're saying, man, uh, it was fun to watch last night, the play calling. I know you're excited when that rookie out of Kell on K4 mesh caught that touchdown pass. You look at that. Full bag. That's old J-Max play. J-Max must have <laughs> called him up, told him to put in that K4 to score a touchdown. So, I agree with you guys, man. It, this team is um, a little more interesting than we thought they'd be. They still got to get guys to take a step to be elite. I don't know who you mm-hmm. put in the top eight to 10 at their position in the league on the whole team. You know, you could pick Quinn maybe and, and Roquan who's still out. But other than that, guys have got to develop. Mm-hmm. I would say offensively too. I love the connection between Cole Komet and Justin Fields. It seems like it's growing a lot more this year compared to years past. What do you guys think that's going to look like this year? Well, I mean, he has to be involved. I mean, it can't just be Mooney, right? I mean, he has to be involved. Um, if they're going to be running a lot of boots, a lot of um, a lot of things that's moving the pocket, well, that's when the tight end, like, he's involved a lot from a defensive perspective, right? Um, these offensive guys, uh, J. Mack and OG, they can tell you a lot better than I can, but from a defensive perspective, teams that tend to boot a lot and move that pocket, they have those tight ends um, that can that can find those open holes. And I don't – J. Mack mentioned it earlier. I'm with you. I don't think he can be Travis Kelsey, but I think he can be a tight end that can find holes and give his quarterback an outlet six yards here, eight yards here, being able to beat a guy one-on-one. I think he can beat linebackers. I think he can beat one-on-one. I think he actually can. He's big and he's, I don't know how athletic he is, but he's a big guy. He can jump over corners. Um, I like him, but Travis Kelsey, yeah, Travis is a different dude. You know, Mm -hmm. Travis is way out there. So, but I, I think he can be very helpful for this offense in his current state. Yeah, I think uh, looking at it, too, you have to, like A.B. saying, you're saying you have to scheme him open like they did uh, last night. Mm-hmm. You got to scheme him open because, you know, like we said, splitting him out wide and, you know, yeah, I don't think he's a guy that can create, you know, one-on-one by himself. I think he needs a little bit of help. So scheming him open like they did in terms of the, the play actions and the boots, you know, I think that's <clears throat> that's what they're going to have to do. And, you know, it also helps Justin Fields. Like, like Brother O said, it's just, He's more comfortable when he's outside of the pocket. We know what he can do. But not only, you know, his accuracy outside of the pocket, it just gives the defense another threat to worry about when he's outside of the pocket because if nothing, nothing's there, we know how athletic he is. He can scramble and, you know, and get a first down to extend that drive. And that just breaks the defense's back when you have a quarterback that has that type of act- accuracy on the move but can also scramble at the same time and extend drive. It just wears the defense down. So, you know, I think with Cole Komet, those are some of the things you're going to have to do uh, between him and Justin Fields in order to keep that that offense moving the chains. Hey, nothing and, and hurts the, your heart. Go ahead. Sorry. Mm-hmm. As a defensive no, player, ahead. nothing nothing hurts your heart more than having every receiver covered, getting pressure on the quarterback, and then he scrambles for four yards, and it was third and three. Oh, my and gosh. You, like, you're you like, can see oh, Justin man. doing that, man. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he's unbelievable, but – when we talk about Cole Komet, right, and, and the Travis Kelsey comparison is interesting, but the guy you think about is George Kittle in the same kind of offense, right? Or like uh, Mercedes, Mercedes Lewis, who isn't a threat really down the field. Mm-hmm. Now, George, now the thing that Cole Komet's going to have to do in this offense is he's, they're going to have to be able to run the ball at him or he's going to have to be the backside blocking tight end, and then people will buy the run sale and they'll get him open. So I think the way he develops, the way he becomes dangerous in this offense is his run block and his pass pro have to take another step. I didn't see much of it last night. A lot of play actions in that first drive. Uh, I didn't see him back on the field later in the game. So I really 
I was trying to watch him run block last night. I know uh, that one play, him and O'Shaughnessy got beat in um, in pass pro, but it kind of looked like those two guys never really worked that combination block together more than it was the fact that he was overwhelmed. It looked like he didn't know – O'Shaughnessy didn't know where, where Cole was going to be. Cole didn't know where O'Shaughnessy was, was going to be. But I'm going to watch that outside zone. J-Mac and I have talked about many times uh, on the podcast about in this offense – that tight end is crucial when you're trying to run the ball, man. If a guy like Alex can set the edge on us, then I can't press the outside. And if a running back can't press the tight end's outside leg, I can't run outside zone. Mm-hmm. So I got to be able to press that outside leg and get up the field from that spot. I can't cut it back early because the tight end is in my lap. So uh, watching him as we go along here develop his run blocking is going to be critical to whether or not he has a big mm-hmm. year. Because if I can only put him on the field, when I'm in a slot to run routes, he's useless to me in this offense. You know, see, this is what I'm talking about right here when Brother O is talking and J-Mac is talking about offense because for somebody at home watching, you mean to tell me um, Komet's going to get better? He'll be a better or a bigger part of this offense if his run blocking is better? And then he mm. then he breaks it down and then explains it to you. It's like, oh, well, damn, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> and when I, when I first said it, you looked at me like I was crazy. Like, what the hell is he talking I was about? Like, what? Like, 